In this episode, I've had the pleasure of speaking with Amy Trout, who created a huge community for mompreneurs. And Amy's story is just so inspiring as she decided that she was going to leave her 16 years of career in healthcare entering entrepreneurship. She's all about empowering and educating people to achieve their goals. And it's something that she's very passionate about it. And you can hear a lot of her stories inside this episode. And some of my key takeaway from this episode is that sometimes being an entrepreneur as a coach, as a woman, it can be really lonely sometimes. And I think it's very important to have that clarity as to what do you want your lifestyle to look like? How do you design your entrepreneurship? And how do you design being a lady boss in your life? That would allow you to set up a lot of boundaries and designing your coach's life so much easier. And the other thing is that um, I think what Amy has shared in this episode is so valuable in the fact that having a community who can support you where you can ask for help is such a game-changing decision and, and feeling that you can have in your business because, you know, honestly, no one can do it all. So enjoy this episode. to introduce our guest for the week, Amy Trout. She is a self-proclaimed chaos coordinator. I'm so interested in hearing what that term means, who is on a mission to make sure that no woman feels alone in her entrepreneur journey. Amy is a powerhouse. She built not one, but two highly successful business from scratch. She is the host of the top 5% globally ranked podcast, The Motivated Mompreneur, and also the founder of the Mom on a Mission community. Amy pivoted from a 16-year career in healthcare to entrepreneurship, and she's all about empowering and educating people to achieve their goals, something she's very passionate about her entire career. And trust me, you don't want to miss this episode. Her energy is just very infectious. The moment I meet her, I can already feel that this is going to be a great conversation. So without further ado, please in, uh, join me and welcome Amy. Amy, thank oh, you so, so excited. much for having me. Oh my gosh, this is just such an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. So thank you. I am so inspired when I went to your website, when I when I was looking at the community that you have created, all these amazing women sitting around the table and chatting away about their dreams and goals. I'm, I'm totally making this up because I know this is the conversation that's going on around that table. So why don't you give us a little quick spiel of how you got into coaching business and how, how did you get started? Yeah, so it it was a journey that I've never anticipated being on. But as you said, I come from a career in healthcare. I worked for 16 years in the outpatient physical therapy realm, and I thought I had life all figured out. On paper, I was checking boxes, you know, graduate college, get married, have kids, have the house, have the cars. Like on paper, I was dream living my dream life. I had success on paper. And then the year 2020 happened and everything shut down. And I was faced with a decision. My kids were in kindergarten and preschool at the time. And I go, oh boy, what are we going to do? We don't have daycare. We don't have school. Who's going to school them? What are we going to do? Well, doing what every woman does, we figure it out. That's our strength as entrepreneurs. We figure things out. So luckily, my employer, since it was outpatient, it was like, you know what? We need to cut staff by 50%. Okay. So I volunteered to take a furlough. And 
we are going through the motions of, you know, the homeschooling piece. And let me tell you, that was a challenge in and of itself. Like kudos to teachers. Like I am not meant to be an elementary or preschool teacher. I learned that very early on in the homeschooling process. So once we made it through that, I still remember there was one day I was sitting in the yard watching my kids ride their bikes. And I'm going, you know what? I'm missing this. I am in such hustle mode. I am missing my kids grow up. I'm watching life just pass me by. I'm going through the motions. I'm doing what I thought I always wanted to do. But at the end of the day, I finally had the time and the space to stop and pause and ask myself, what do I really want out of this life? Like, isn't there more to life than this constant hustle mode? Sure, the money is great, but no amount of money will buy back this time that I have with my kids right now. So I, on a leap of faith, said, you know what? I've always thought about starting my own home residential organizing business. That was something, you know, getting rid of the clutter really helped me gain so much control when my kids were first born. It really brought me so much peace. And I'm like, you know what? I want to share this with others. I want to help others create that same feeling that I had. So I did it. I learned a lot and the business grew. And it grew fast. And I'm going, oh my gosh, what the heck am I doing? You know, imposter syndrome starts to kick in because it's like, who am I? Like, who am I to be running this business? I'm making really good money running this business. And, you know, I really had to overcome those self-limiting beliefs. So this business is growing. We're chugging along. And, you know, part of growing a business, they always say network, you know, network with people in your community, network with those around you. So I would get on a lot of these local networking meetings with like my chamber of commerce, different groups in my area. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is great. But then time and time again, I was constantly told, you know what, you have to choose. If you want to be a successful business owner, you really have to compartmentalize. You can't mm -hmm. have both. You can either be a really awesome present mom, or you can have a successful business. You can't do both well at the same time. It's just not going to work. And so I found myself just kind of like going, really, really? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like the strengths of being a mom really helped me be a better business owner. So many of those like innate strengths that we possess. I mean, have you ever negotiated with a three-year-old? Those are some incredible skills. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was like, okay, this just isn't the right table for me. So mm -hmm. on a whim, I built my own. I was like, you know what? If I feel this way, I'm sure there's probably at least one other person out there. Yeah. So I started a Facebook group for women in my, my local community, just on a whim, and it started to grow. And then it kept growing. And then we started doing these master classes. We were sharing our strengths. We were collaborating. We were doing all of these things. And what I found myself doing was mentoring these women. Like, how, how are you juggling it all? How have you been able to grow this business without a business degree? How are you doing this? And so I was mentoring them. And I didn't even realize it at the time because I'm like, I'll teach you what I know. I'm like, you know, there's room for everybody. And <laughs> I fell in love with it. They were seeing wins. And that just brought me so much joy. And really, when I, I take the time to look back now, what I realize is I'm doing now what I've done my whole entire career, which is empowering and educating. I worked in an out, outpatient orthopedic um, mm -hmm. version of the therapy. So we would take patients day one after a knee replacement through 12 weeks out. You have to set a goal. You have to reverse engineer it. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be self-limiting beliefs. There's going to be challenges that, that pop up. So now I'm able to do what I loved about that job, empowering and educating others to create the success that they desire. I, I love how you said that, you know, a lot of women feel pressure that they have to pick one or the other. I think being walking into being an entrepreneur as a mom, it feels like if I were to have a successful business, I would have to sacrifice some of my time with my family or the time that I need to be with my kids and going to networking event, collaboration and doing all these busy work. And I had to choose between the two. How did you cross that mindset of I have to choose 
rather rather seeing that as a as a choice, but but like giving um more of a a, a more like embracing it with the fact that I can balance the two. Why not have the two? Right, exactly. I don't know. For me, I've always just been a very bullheaded person, and I'm like, you tell me I can't do something, and I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to figure out how to make it work. I'm going to do this. So for me, it was just really leaning into myself, getting quiet, and looking inwards. Of well, why can't I have both? Yes, society's telling me this, but here's what I really feel. And if I'm feeling it, you know, sometimes we have to be. Vulnerable and be the one to go first and say, "Hey, no, I, I don't, I don't agree with that, and that's okay. I respect you. I respect your opinion, but I, I see things differently, and here's why. So let's challenge that a little bit. Let's create some change. So it wasn't easy because I will completely be upfront and honest. I am an introvert, like through and through." I was never on social media until I started my business, but I felt alone. And it was really like in digging inward and going, okay, if I feel this way, I'm sure mm-hmm. someone else does. And so do I want her to continue to feel alone? No, because I feel alone. Let's link arms together and change that narrative. Because by changing the narrative then, we can make such a big impact, not only for us, but for our families, for our kids, for future generations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What has been the biggest challenge that you've noticed from your clients in terms of like what makes them feel like they're feeling stagnant, they're feeling like stuck? What's been the biggest challenge? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest challenges is getting sucked into, I call it mom murderdom. We feel like we have to do it all. And for me, the hardest words to say, and it's still hard for me to say, are I need help. Because yes, you can do all of the things, but you cannot do all of the things well all at the same time. Asking for help is the highest form of self-care that you can give yourself because you are not meant to do it alone. And this doesn't even just go for business. This involves asking your kids for help. I mean, even when they're tiny, they're way more capable than we can give them credit for. We can show them, we can teach them how to contribute to the family because at the end of the day, we're a team. And I run up my family a lot like I do my business. So we have, yes, I have the business plan, but we also have a family plan so that we're all on the same page. We have our mission statement. We have our vision, our values, our roles, our responsibilities, so that we're sharing the load so that not one of us feels resentful to the other. Like you're not doing enough because I can't. I can't do it all. And even taking advantage of some of the wonderful things that did come out of the pandemic. I mean, look at how Mafar grocery pickup has become, you know, things like that that save us time. It's okay to take advantage of those services. And a lot of times we stop and we go into the guilt mode, like, well, that costs, you know, so much. Okay, well, I know when I'm pushing my cart through the aisles of Aldi, I'm going to be throwing a whole bunch of things in from that aisle of shame that I don't need. So in reality, it's saving me money because now I'm not buying all those extra things. And number two, I'm really able then to take back so much time instead of taking the 15 minutes to drive there, the hour to get the groceries, the 15 minutes to drive back home. Now I've just reclaimed an hour and a half of my time that I can literally invest into income producing activities within my business. So I really am so adamant about, okay, you're not in this alone. Ask Mm -hmm. for help. Really take the time and look at your calendar and see where you can ask for help. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that because I think one of my biggest struggles when I first started was also asking, just simply ask, you know, asking for business and asking for help. It was such a... I think overall society we have grew up in is that when you're doing the ask, it almost feels like, oh, I'm second citizen. I am not yeah. enough, you know? So there's a lot of that imposter syndrome that shows up. How, how do you balance? I, I imagine your life is pretty, um, 
fulfilled with uh, effective and being productive. How do you balance between your business hour versus your work hour? Uh, what does it look like for you in terms of like your day to day's calendar? Yeah. So for me, it's all about being intentional and having clear boundaries because this is something I've struggled with a lot. When I went from working full time, 40 hours a week, I was on a schedule. I saw a patient every half hour for 16 years. My brain functions off the schedule. So it's all in finding what works best for you. So for me, it was establishing working hours. Okay. I'm working from this time and till this time being intentional then of how I'm spending my time within those hours. So often we see entrepreneurs quitting their nine to fives to work 24 seven. It does not have to be that way. You just need to be intentional about how you're using your time. And then going a step deeper, if you are a mom, if you are a parent, if you have other demands in your life, it's important to realize what season of life that you are in. If you have an infant at home, that, is, that child is going to require so much more time and energy from you. You can't expect your business to grow as fast as someone like me that I have kids in school during the school year for six and a half hours out of the day. So I have that six and a half hours to just have pure focus. And then again, within that time, really being intentional, being intentional about using income producing activities versus chasing shiny objects. I think this is where a lot of us get hung up because we think that we're scrolling for inspiration on Instagram to find our next brilliant post idea or that we need another course. We need more certifications. Well, when it comes down to it, you need to spend your time doing those activities that are actually going to move the needle forward. So I literally have three daily non-negotiables that are scheduled on my calendar that even if I don't want to do them, this is my business. I'm still showing up. I'm treating my business like a business because a lot of times, let's be honest, when we're at home, it's easy to, oh, I'll just do some laundry. You know, while I'm on this networking meeting, I'll throw a load in. You know, no, like treat your business like a business when you're working, even if you only have an hour a day. Let's focus on one task that will move the needle forward. It's all about consistency, consistency of doing those over and over and over because you don't just wake up one day with a business. You're constantly learning. You're constantly having to look at your data and see, all right, what's working? Let's do more of this. All right, this didn't go so well. How can we adjust? Like last summer, I did terrible. When my kids were home for the summer, I struggled. So this year, I didn't do any podcast recordings over the summer. I zoomed out. I'm like, okay, how can we make this work? So I batched. I batched a ton of content before the kids were out of school for the summer. And then also, I hired a sitter to have help on certain days so that I could have that focus on my business. Because what I find is I was so scattered. You know, I'm trying to focus on the task at hand, yet I'm getting, hey, she hit me. Hey, I need a snack. Hey, she's doing this. Like, you know, it was that constant mom, mom, mom. My yeah. brain can't switch tasks like that. I yeah. need that focus time. And I think just really being self-aware of how do you function best is so, so critical. Yeah, I, I think one, one of the uh, key idea that came up for me was consistency, right? And I think one of the things that I found um, that a lot of clients and also myself struggle with is sometimes we get into our way of thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I don't see any result. I don't, I'm looking at the number, oh, it's not, it's not turning out well. I was just talking about um, how the July launch, I was expecting more signed up, but it wasn't that the way that it was. And I, I got into my own way. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I need to change everything. I got to re re revamp everything. So what's your tip in terms of how do we get out of our way and just not looking at the outcome, but rather than doing something else? Yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to mindset. It's yeah. all mindset. And that's something I didn't realize when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur is how much we can be our biggest cheerleader or our biggest enemy. And I really think it's important to 
detach from the outcome. Start viewing your business like an experiment. All right, let's let's look. Let's see what didn't go well. So that lunch didn't go well. Okay, guess what? That happens. I've had silent lunches. I think every single entrepreneur out there has had a lunch that didn't go well. And that's okay. I mean, this hasn't happened just once. It's happened multiple times. But what do you do? It's consistently showing up, zooming out and looking at the data. Okay. Was it just a bad time of year for my target audience? You know, is summertime, are people just traveling a lot? Are they on vacation? You know, we always make it about ourselves. But when you can really detach and be like, you know what? No, this was a bad time of year. I really didn't talk about it as much as I thought I would. I didn't, you know, have a solid email process. Maybe there was a glitch with one of the sign up links. Mm-hmm. You know, really leveraging that data and detaching, going, you know what, this tells me nothing about my worth as a human being. It's just data. What can I do a little different next time to make it even better? And I'll tell you what, every single time I've had a silent launch, my next launch typically is one of my most successful then because I use what I learned. I identify those gaps and then you fill them and you make it even better. Yeah. A lot of these, uh, uh, they, they said there's no failure. There's only information. Like all the things that you try and done are just information that's coming in and you learn from those information. Right. Yeah. And I think we, we all forget that we started at ground zero. Every single business started at ground <laughs> zero. You have to keep going. You have to use the data and you can't make it about you and your work. It's just data. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm interested to learn more about your community. Like, how do you work yeah. with clients and what what is your community about? Where do we find it? Yeah, so we started the membership community about two years ago now. And again, mm-hmm. it was just on a whim. And it wasn't until a while into it that we started growing it. And now we have all of these resources, trainings, we do high coaching, we have templates, we have all of these things that help entrepreneurs build a business. So the membership is perfect for that early stage entrepreneur. It's like, you know what? I just need some of that strategy. I need some of that knowledge. We've got guest experts that come in every single month and teach us the newest, the latest, the greatest, because Let's face it, things are constantly changing in business. And just like in healthcare, that's why you do continuing education. But here's the key. You have to implement what you know. I feel like we're living in such a world of consumptivitis mode. We're consuming, consuming, consuming. We have all these wonderful ideas, but we're not actually taking action. We're not implementing what we know. And that's the hard part is consistently doing the thing, especially when you're not seeing results at first, but doing it over and over and over because I am such a firm believer in that if you have a solution to a problem that someone has, it's your responsibility to share it with the world. That person is out there. And if you can sell it to one person, you can share that solution with hundreds of people. It's just a matter of standing out in a really, really noisy world. So that's what the membership's there for. It's just there to empower you with the resources you need for success. And then one-on-one clients, I take on clients that are more established in business that have that business, but they're not getting the consistent income. They're hitting the 5K month, the 1K month, the 3K month, just all over the place. So what we do is we really dive into, number one, clarity. What do you want your business to look like? Let's get you out of that comparison mode. Really start reverse engineering all of those goals, figuring out what we can automate, what we can get off of your plate, how we can make your business work around your life versus your life around your business. So giving you that control back so that you can have the freedom and the flexibility that you desire. Because at the end of the day, this is your business. You can run it in whatever capacity you want. You know, I think it's so often thrown around on social media, especially it's like, oh, if you're not making a 10K month, if you're not having $100,000 a year, it's like, you're not doing well. Well, no. What do you want your business to look like? Maybe that's just having enough extra money to pay for your kids' dance lessons, to take your family on a vacation, 
what do you want? And once you know what you want, that acts kind of like it's our GPS destination that you're putting in there. We know where you're at. We know where you want to be. And we take steps to get there. And if we go off course, we have a plan to analyze and recalculate so that we stay on track and get to where we want to go. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it's interesting how entrepreneurship, as we enter it, we start to lose track because there's, like you said, there's so much noise that's coming up, right? If you're not making this much of money, then you are not a successful coach. If you're not doing this, then you're not doing it well or you're doing it wrong. And so we start to lose focus of exactly what is it that we wanted when we first got into entrepreneurship. And I find that a lot of my clients too, and they're, they're like, they don't have that clarity exactly what they want and they lose the focus <laughs> and they're just like trying everything and it makes sense why you don't get any result or outcome that you want because you're trying everything so right. I love everything that you just share yeah thank you yeah we're constantly chasing shiny objects and it's just the fact of the matter it's how society works it's our brains but at the end of the day, you have to realize there's 20,000 different ways to get to the same outcome. It was the same thing when I was working in the physical therapy space. You yeah. could do all of these different things and achieve the same outcome. The key is finding a way that works for you, that's sustainable for you, that feels good to you, because this is your business. You get to call the shot. Ah, beautifully said. You get to call the shot. Ah, such a such a great way to see it and designing the lifestyle that we feel like connected to. And after all, it is our life. Right. Yeah. Right. Any any last word of advice for our audience? Just stay consistent. Building a business is a long game. It is a long game. But something that will help you collapse time is asking for help. Recognize where you need help, what your weaknesses are, and link arms with others that can help you get there. You need three people in your life to succeed in a business. Those in front of you, learn from them, borrow the belief. They're there to show you what you want is possible. Link arms with those beside you because they get you. They understand exactly what you are going through. You are not meant to build this business alone. And then be the light for those behind you. Make their journey a little bit easier because at the end of the day, it is so fulfilling to be able and go, hey, I was where you were. I recognize that you're having a hard time. How can I help you? Like really being there to serve, to serve others, not to sell others, serve them and help them on this journey because it's not easy. But if we can help each other, we will create such a beautiful world. Amy, you're such a big connector. <laughs> like, I don't know where that comes from, but that word connector just popping to my head. I think you're such a big connector for all those around you, um, you know, be with the people who's ahead of you, be with the people who are at your level, and also be the person to inspire others who's behind you. I think that's just gold. Oh my gosh, that's so beautifully said. Thank you so much. Because when you think about it, there's so much abundance in this world. And it's just our brain saying, you know what, you have to compete, you have to compete. No, it's primal, it's survival. But once you realize no, we all do things in a unique way. And that's our superpower. If we can be there to encourage each other and help each other, gosh, it gets so much easier. You're so inspiring. I'm so glad to have you on the show. <laughs> thank you oh, so thank much, you Amy. So much. Thank you so much for coming. This was my pleasure. I always love chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you.